Joe Biden might want to be wide awake for tonight's GOP debate. The big guy prepping for a barrage of attacks from candidates who want to kick him out of the Oval Office. But he's not worried. He's going zen. The president took a Pilates class followed by a spin class while on their ritzy vacation in Lake Tahoe. And it looks like it could be a late night for Biden. Will you watch the debate later? I'll try to see if get as much as I can. What's your expectation for the GOP debate tonight? I have The Democrats are making a pathetic attempt to troll the debate, and it's already backfiring. Dems will pay to fly a private plane around Milwaukee with an extreme MAGA banner. But here's the kicker. The stunt will reportedly emit nearly four times as much carbon as the average American produces in a day. The DNC chair also taking a page out of Biden's ultra MAGA playbook by painting all the candidates as extremists. They're all extreme. All of the apples in that bag are rotten. That contrast is stark between who Joe Biden is. Joe Biden believes that our better days are ahead of us and not behind us. The Republicans uh, believe that our best days are behind us. And so uh, we're going to paint that picture. Uh, tonight, uh, folks, get your popcorn. It's going to be a circus. All right, Greg, regarding the, the DNC banner, isn't it ironic <laughs> how the, uh, the Democrats claim to be a party of unity, and yet right during the Republican debate, they're flying this banner? Aren't they the ones stoking division? Well, I mean, this is team sport politics. By the way, I love the fact that Biden's taking a spin class. Yeah. Yeah, because that's at least the bike stands still. <laughs> so he's going to be safe. I think this is a really important point to make here. Joe Biden's record will be on display for millions of people for the very first time because the media hasn't done its job on crime and in border and education and the drug epidemic. So this debate could very well be an introduction to the Biden disaster, the Biden era. It might be the first time people have ever heard about Hunter influence peddling the $700 that they lose a month that could have been used, for example, for a three day vacation with their family or get their kid a bike. You've got to make you've got to quantify that poetically uh, for people to understand it. And, and the sheer corruption will finally be heard by millions of Americans that didn't know it before. And again, I say what I said before, which is that it would be really good. The ad hominem stuff works for people who are already on your side. But you really have to do something with the facts and be specific. And again, the $700 is a really persuasive thing to, to like, for people who've never heard of Joe, what Joe does, that you're losing 700 bucks a month mm -hmm. on him. And the other part about it is, and this is to me is the kill, sh well, there's two kill shots here. One, you don't need to make fun of him anymore. It's kind of sad. The bigger insult is laying off him. It's like, you know what? This guy isn't yeah. well. We need to move beyond him, get past the sale and talk about what's next. But the problem with the Democrats is they have Kamala Harris, so they can't move to her. So therefore, it can only be a Republican because you can't rely on either one of them. All right, Harold, you know, uh, just as, as Greg was saying, Americans are spending an extra 700 and I think it's $9 a month more than they were two years ago. So if 65 percent of the voters identify the inflation as a big problem, even bigger than health care, drug addiction or violent crime, shouldn't this be every candidate's priority tonight? You would imagine it would be, Judge. I mean, you've not heard Republicans talk as much about this either in the House. Uh, they seem to be uh, intoxicated with investigating. Uh, you see the, some of the presidential members, or presidential candidates, excuse me, talking more about how to use government to punish people in the private sector. I hope that Governor DeSantis, I agree with you and Jesse, he's got a big, a big job tonight. He's got to do less business, Disney bashing and give us more of a sense of what he's going to do to make the country stronger. But Joe Biden, we shouldn't kid ourselves. He will, like every other incumbent, have a record to run on. He'll talk about 13 million new jobs. He'll talk about de-risking the American economy from China with the investments in uh, helping us to develop and produce chips here in America and even a trillion dollar investment in infrastructure and how he rallied the world uh, against Russia and our fight with Ukraine. Now, 
will these things be enough? He'll have to defend crime, what he's done on it. He'll have to defend what he's done on the border. And I would agree with Greg there. There are things that every incumbent will have to, have to uh, every incumbent has to defend. And this president will be, be no exception. But tonight, we shouldn't kid ourselves either. Which of these candidates can differentiate themselves? Which one can stand out for doing the things that Jesse said well, not, or I think Greg said it, not just a, a sound bite on Twitter, but who can get, not, not an applause line, but people that sit back in their chair in that arena and at home and say, wow, that's the kind of leadership I'd like to see over the next four years. To me, that's the test. And, you know, Dana, based on what Harold is just saying, should people real be uh, on the stage tonight be uh, attacking Joe Biden or should they be offering their own solutions? I think it's a combination. I think because if people are watching tonight in the back of their mind, they're wondering, is this a person that could beat Joe Biden in a general election? And I do hope that we hear a little bit about the Joe Biden policies, right? Because I think a lot of what he calls accomplishments are vulnerabilities. The other thing is recently, Ron DeSantis has been pointing out that if he's the nominee, he will not allow Joe Biden just to rest in the basement. What the Democrats have wanted for a long time, and we saw that this, they've been wanting to run against Donald Trump. They think that's their best option. Then they got a little nervous. Remember when you were saying about how Ron DeSantis had that momentum for a while, and all of a sudden the media and the White House, everybody was attacking Ron DeSantis. They've backed off of that because they think he also doesn't have that. So does he turn that around tonight? The other thing, interestingly, Judge, is that Joe Biden has just purchased a Spanish language ad in Florida. Mm. They have this big, massive ad buy, and part of it is the Spanish language one. And to me, that means that they're recognizing that they are losing ground, especially mm -hmm. on the economy with blacks and Hispanics, and they need those uh, demographics to turn out because the Republicans don't have to win all of those votes. They just have to win more than they have before, and they're on the path to do that. So tonight's important for that as well. The last thing is, I love that uh, this Biden advisor said he's not watching the debate because he is focused on the American people. Okay, <laughs> he is on his second in vacation in a month, or maybe I like the whole month. And then today, of all days, to say I'm going to Pilates and spin class, you know how much those are? Do you know how much those are? When you talk about $709 you're losing a month, those classes are probably $60, $50 in the place where he is. It doesn't look good. If I were him, I would have been doing something with a factory today because mm -hmm. you want to show a contrast. Instead, he's on vacation. All right, Jesse. Um, it, it, the, his campaign co-chair also told reporters, I don't expect he, that you'll see Joe Biden respond to any of the attacks. So is Biden so far ahead that, you know, his only concern is Trump or, you know, are his numbers based on the disdain for Trump? Joe Biden doesn't have to do anything because the entire establishment media will do it for him. So he can go to Pilates class and not have to lift a finger. The goal for the candidates tonight is to disqualify President Biden and Bidenomics. Two things. First, on President Biden, you say he is an incompetent, detached, debilitated, corrupt establishment Democrat who, and you point to poignant moments, Hawaii. You point to the Afghanistan withdrawal. You point to things that showcase the fact that he is a callous, cold, out-of-touch human being that doesn't care about you. And then you attack Bidenomics. To Greg's point, you have high rates, you have inflation, gas prices, and illegal immigration. Those things are chewing up take-home pay. Look at the bank account, and it's not what it used to be. And then you pivot to what your plan is. How specifically are you going to close the border? How specifically are you going to boost paychecks? How specifically are you going to pump more oil? Those are the things they need to focus on. You can get cute with the tax, but if you stay focused on policy, that's what the country cares about, solutions. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page.